Hey there everyone. We're going to do a pink resin tray that is uh, hopefully very three-dimensional feeling and I'm just doing it because it's around Easter time. I was wanting to do some Easter colors. So I'm going to explain everything I'm going to use but this is a like a 13 inch silicone mold from Amazon and these are the almost five inch deep coasters from Amazon as well. So I'm going to make two coasters in one tray. The tray will be a two-step process because we're going to do the first part which will be the beautiful part and then we'll have to unmold it, turn it over and put a top coat with some knobs on it. And so when we top coat that we'll top coat the coasters as well. So I'm going to do I would say uh, six ounces for the coasters, three for each coaster, even though they hold four and a half to five ounces. I'm not going to fill them all the way up because I am going to top coat them. So six ounces and I'm going to do 24 for the tray. So that would be 30 and I'm just going to top it off and go to 32. And uh, I'd rather have too much resin or go a little thicker, you know, that way. So let's go ahead and mix our resin and then we can talk some more about all the other things. But when you're mixing also have some good ventilation, safety glasses or glasses, gloves, a mask if you can wear one. These products usually say no VOCs or low VOCs but you always want to err on the side of caution. So we're going to do 16 ounces of Part B first. I'm using Counterculture DIY Artist Resin Medium Viscosity Yellow Green Label. This is my go-to resin for any project where I want to especially use a special effects and you use the kind of the warming of the resin and the timing to make that special effect. And I have a, a flexible plastic measuring cup that holds up to 32 ounces. I really really love it because you can let the leftover residue cure in it and just kind of flex it a little bit and break that resin free and when you have a hard container it doesn't work as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. I've got a stick I've probably used 30-40 times. <laughs> I even taped a little handle on it but um, okay we're going to start our timer at six minutes. That's our mixing time. Keep baby wipes and 91% alcohol around for cleanup. And I wanted to show you that when you start mixing resin, it's going to um, be cloudy. As you can see, it's cloudy, but it will clear up as the six minutes goes by. And this is the speed at which I mix. I don't mix it fast. I just mix it consistently. You can go back and forth. You can go around the edges. You can do a crazy eight. But you don't have to do it fast. It's just consistency is the key for mixing. Continually going around those edges to make sure you get parts A and B all mixed together. Again, we did B first and then A. A is thicker, so it, the thicker goes into the thinner easier and it's easier to mix. So always remember A goes into B. So I'll fast forward through the next five minutes here and I'll be back after six minutes. All right. Now we're going to hit stopwatch and hit start and we're going to start timing it because that's the next important step of this process is letting this resin just settle for a while and start to warm. So I'm just going to let it sit and rest for a while and we're going to put it aside and just leave it alone for a while and I'll explain to you what else we're going to use. One thing to note is alcohol and alcohol inks are flammable. So if you've just put it on the surface of your resin and you're using a torch, and this is my torch and I have paper towels just taped around it to keep it from ruining my, uh, this part of the 
torch. I've got stuff all over my torch, but it just keeps me from building up layers of resin with messy hands. So that's why I've got this little paper towel thing on here. But when you torch immediately over alcohol or alcohol inks, it can flame up and I don't want you to do that. So be cognizant of that fact. So again, 91% alcohol, which I put in my little spray bottle, baby wipes, and it's just good to keep around for general cleanup. If you want to clean out your mold with alcohol, it's a good way. You can spray alcohol into resin at any point in time. It just evaporates, but it's great for surface bubbles and cleaning and so forth. And, you know, have a piece of tape around just to check for dust or anything that kind of lands in your mold, which happens with me all the time. I've got a skewer that I'll be using to drag through the resin. Um, I have a heat gun that's 1800 watts. I also have a low temp heat gun which is like only 300 watts. Uh, we're going to use just a tiny bit of gold leaf. The white I'm going to mix up is going to have pinata white alcohol ink. Tiny tiny bit of Armor Art epoxy white pigment. Just a tiny bit or you can use Cast and Craft white pigment. They are both from Amazon. I would just put one drop uh, of that in or just a tiny bit, which we're going to use this one today. The white will also have a hint of ball gown by this little piggy, a TLP pigment mica powder. And as you can see, it's kind of a um, shimmery goldish pearl color. So I want to give the white just a hint of a pearl gold feel. And then I'm also going to have a band of color around the edge and that's going to be TLP, this little piggy. Axolotl, I don't know how to really pronounce it, A-X-O-L-O-T-L. -O -O and it's a real pretty shimmery, kind of almost looks like a color shift of blue to pink. Uh, but mostly pink looking. So we're going to use that. I also have a digital thermometer. That's for kitchens, but you can use it in your resin. And right now it says it's 75 degrees. And that's just the temperature of the room. I guess it is. It doesn't feel that warm in here, but yeah, if that's the temperature of the room. And when we put it in the resin, it will go up in temperature. And kind of the ideal time is over 100 degrees for your um, resin to really do a beautiful effect. And so we can use that just to test the warmth of the resin in a little bit. So I will be back when I feel like the resin has warmed up enough to go on to the next step. And I'll tell you how long that's taken. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Right now we're at 19 minutes. I'm going to give this one more stir. It has different temperatures in different parts of the resin, I noticed too, when I, whenever I check the temp. So we're just going to turn the light on, hold it in here for a few minutes and see where it ends up. But it does not feel really warm to the touch yet at this point. Maybe just very, very slightly. So right now it's about 96 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead, clean off this, you clean your probe totally off so that the resin doesn't cure on it. And then you wait till it clicks when you close it and that turns off the, uh, the battery and everything. So I'm going to go ahead, um, for the pink color, I'm going to go for about, I'm going to go almost to the top almost five ounces. And for the white, I'm going to do about two. So the rest will go into the molds. These hold, again, these hold four and a half to five ounces. And I'm going to go a little over halfway.
I'm not filling this tray up. It holds quite a bit of resin. Um, so we're filling it a little over halfway. Now I put this just over to the side to cure and you can put it upside down on your silicone mat to cure either way. Uh, and then you can get the resin out later when it's cured. You can just pop it out. I take my paper towel and I wipe my stick off. Put it aside and I let it cure. We're going to use the heat, heat gun and just heat it up a little bit. Try not to go near the edges of the mold because it will sometimes make the uh, the resin stick to the edge of the mold. Okay, so here in this cup, we're going to do the pink, which is that axolotl, axolotl, whatever that is. <laughs> so I'm going to put a healthy spoonful, and it's about the size of my pointer finger. And then another half, maybe. I'm going to move this away from the mold. You can't see me stirring it because I don't want it to fly around and land in the mold. Now this feels pretty warm. That's the funny part. We're at 26 minutes. Okay, I want more, I want more mica than that. I'm going to put a full spoonful again. Again, I'm not stirring it over the mold or the resin that's poured. That's a pretty, pretty color. I am going to add the pinata ink, the um, pink pinata ink. Put a couple of drops in there. And it's pretty warm, but um, I want to put it in really right before I put the white in. Okay, so here's for my white. The Armor Art white pigment paste. You take your stick, you put it in, and then you really just kind of wipe it back off. So there's really not a mound or anything. Put that in your resin. And then I'm going to um, use that ball gown. Let's see if I can show you. I don't know if you can see how it has a golden shimmer and I'm just going to put don't want a lot so I'm just going to put a little bit on the end of my spoon here and we're going to see what that looks like so we want the shimmer to show and if it doesn't show in the white we just want to add a little bit more I'm going to add just a touch more about like what I did before and that's going to be it. And then my alcohol ink, I want it to be most of what the white is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I want it to be mostly alcohol ink. And it is warm and it's 28 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put that aside, and I'm going to get busy and add the um, gold leaf just a little bit in the middle. I decided to use gold leaf because it kind, kind of sometimes will stay suspended, which I like. If you put in beads and things which are heavier, it kind of goes down to the bottom. And um, this just has a little bit of a lighter look to it. So that's going to be right in the middle. So now we're going to do the alcohol ink.
This is Rose by Bray Reese. And this is a Bray Reese, it's called Butter. So it's really a yellow, but it's got some shimmer. Or, um, I don't know if it has glitter, but it's got an iridescent look to it. So I'm going to put it right here in the middle, just where the gold leaf is, kind of, and let it work its way out. So I don't want any more rose, I don't think, except for maybe right here. I'm going to add one more drop. I guess I can go ahead and do this. I dropped drop there, but anyway. Filling my cup just to make sure it's not too hot. one drop in the middle. That yellow butter is pretty bright. I thought it was going to be kind of subtle, but it's pretty bright. Okay, so now I'm going to take my skewer and just kind of squiggle through the alcohol ink just to kind of get it mixed up a bit. And mix that coral into the pink. I'm not super crazy about that butter, to be honest, but because it's so bright. Let's see if just putting my spoon on the surface can just take some of it out. It's not too bad on the coasters. Okay. So, squiggly, and then get that gold back to the center. Okay, now that the alcohol is kind of mixed in, now you can use a torch and just lightly lightly torch it. Okay, and I want to fill my it's 34 minutes, so I need to use that, and I need to put my pink in before I put the white in. It's the cup is pretty warm. And it's pretty full too. So just going around a couple of times. And then around the edge of the coasters. Okay. And then this kind of scooted over, so I'm going to take my skewer and just try to move it back a bit in with the rest of the mica. Okay, now I'm going to get busy and do this white. Start in the middle. I'm just going to go in a spiral. Same here. I 
The key with the white too is for it to lay on top of your resin and not sink down. You don't want it to be super heavy and that's why I wanted to use more um, alcohol ink versus pigment this time. Okay, so now just in the middle I'm just going to go ahead and try to thin that out a bit. Same here because that's where the, the blobs sometimes happen. I'm going to heat it with my heat gun. I'm going to drag in I'm wiping my stick between every dip into the resin. I'm going to be doing different colors uh, for this Easter time frame and pink was where I started. I'm going to do another one and do uh, probably yellows and just all kinds of different color combinations and um, I think with this one I waited too long. I shouldn't have um, waited as long to go ahead and put the white in because it moves less it will kind of bloom out uh, when you put it in at the right timing but if you wait too long it kind of stays put where you put it into your resin so we'll just give it about five hours to where it's cured it's cooled down you can touch it it's not tacky and we'll uh, see what it looks like I'll be back okay Things didn't move that much, it looks like, so I'm not really expecting much on this one. But we'll go for it and see what happens. It's been over five hours. Oh, still pretty though. 
still pretty. Very, very frou through, very feminine. And there's that, which is clear. So I'm thinking I may want to put a color on the back, but I'm not sure. I'm going to let it sit here for a few. I'm going to think about it. So if I had a white background, it would look like that. There's a dark background. Which doesn't look very Eastery. Huh. Not sure. I'm going to think about it and I'll be back. Hey. Okay, it's the next day. I had some time to think about it. And what I want to do is put the um, this Axolotl, uh, which has that color shift. It's kind of a bluish, uh, pearly shimmer. I love that. So I'm going to use this as the background and add some white crystal from Etsy Funshine Color Shop and this is this little piggy pigment mica. But anyway, I'm going to use Fast Set for this layer and I'm going to mix six ounces been six minutes and I'm gonna add the pigment and I want to go pretty quickly because this is a working time of about um, 10 to 15 minutes tops and you get past that point and you can't um, move it it just turns plasticky and gooey um, so I did two of the pink and one of the sparkle white and we're gonna see. I'm starting it off camera so it doesn't land on my pieces. I don't want it to be transparent because I want it as a background. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna add one more of the pink Meanwhile, I want to get this, um, I put this on here because I've got another project and I want to move this um, and you move it without tilting it and so forth. So, it looks good. I'm going to just put down a little puddle on both coasters. take my silicone brush and just spread it out. Okay. Torch those really, really quick. Okay. I'm not going to put all of it in just in case I need. Uh, I don't want it to go over the edge. So again, working out. I kind of do a little sweeping motion at the edges instead of just pulling it straight out. Having it on a turntable, or this is actually a Lazy Susan I've got covered with plastic, but um, that just helps tremendously. So you can kind of see in good lighting where you're sitting or working. And so you want to just get it to those edges as quickly as possible before it starts getting super tacky. 
And because it's thicker, it doesn't spill over the edge like a medium or a thin viscosity would. Again, 10 minutes is really your working time uh, that you've got with this fast set. Do not use the turbo fast set, which is even faster. You will never get it done before it sets up and you'll ruin your project. Okay, now that I've got everything kind of covered to the edges, now I can go back and add just a little bit more. Drop in my... And then the rest can go. Never touch the tip of your heat gun. You will burn yourself tremendously. So now I'm just going to go back around and make sure it's kind of spread to the edges a bit. So it's already getting a bit tacky. And that just tells you that you've reached your limit. And you can just lay this and let it cure and then it'll just basically just peel off. So ultimately I don't know what this is going to look like till we turn it over in a few hours and then we'll see what the top of it looks like really have one any of the pieces touching each other but anyway they're level and I'm gonna move it and I'll be back okay it's been a few hours this is cured you can take the silicone and just kind of peel it off your brush This one's not cured like really super hard so I'm gonna let it cure a little bit more. So that gave it some shimmer in the background and I think I can live with that. I have one little tiny boo-boo right here. You see that little dark speck? It's between this layer and this layer on the back. So I've got to find and figure out a way to camouflage that somehow before I put a top coat and knobs on which I'm going to use gold knobs I'm going to see if I can paint on it with acrylics to just kind of make it something go over here and maybe add something right here and see if that takes care of it if not I can totally clean that off because this is resin and not have that at all but I'm gonna see if I can try that first
Okay, now we're going to uh, mix up some Fast Set, which is the blue label. Sets up in an hour or two. We're going to do about five ounces. So I've just marked inside the cup of a three ounce cup and be first. Then A. You have about a 10 minute working time and it sets up in two hours where you can touch it, which is fabulous. If you're like me and you like to see things right away. I'm gonna mix for six minutes and I'll be back. This is thicker than medium viscosity, so it's gonna take a little bit more effort to stir and mix and you're gonna get a lot more bubbles because it's super thick. And um, but the beauty of it is, is that you have instant uh, curing within an hour or two. So I'll be back. Okay, it's been six minutes. And it's very bubbly because it's super thick. Um, so there's a lot of bubbles. And I put a little dollop in the middle of the coaster. Again, we only have really about 10 minutes working time. And I'm just going to do sweeping motions that kind of hit those edges of the coaster but don't go over. Instead of pulling it straight out, I just do a sweeping motion. And that seems to work pretty well to keep it from flowing over. And you don't uh, need too much resin either. Um, if you go overboard, then you have more issues with spillage and, you know, going over the edge, that kind of thing. I think that one's good. And heating it just to makes it a little bit more pliable. Um, makes it not quite so thick and tacky as far as spreading it out. Make sure your gloved hands are not sticky with resin or anything like that to put on the bottom of this coaster or any coaster you're top coating. Make sure your hands are clean, your gloves are clean. You shouldn't be doing this just with your hands. You should always have gloves on when you use resin to protect yourself. Okay, so now we're going to pour the rest of this. I'm just going to kind of go out in a spiral. I'm not going to use all of it. I'm going to save some in case I need it. And then you're going to just pull it out to the edge of the tray. Lots of bubbles, so you got lots of bubbles to pop. And again, <clears throat> dragging it out to the very edge, but not taking it over the edge. It's great to have a turntable, or this is on a um, Lazy Susan that's covered with plastic because this this mold is 13 inches so the this whole Lazy Susan is at least probably 18 16 to 18 inches okay I accidentally got a little gold leaf there so I want to just make sure it stays
it'll kind of catch itself if it gets near the edge because it is thick it'll kind of catch itself on the edge and um, it makes it more difficult for it to tip over because it is so thick so now I'm just gonna go around and make sure I got everything up to the edge I can kind of see in the reflection of my lights where I've missed an edge or something like that okay I got a little bit more and kind of just trickle it around the edge and again you can just take this and lay it down and let it cure and it'll pop right off so I'm going to torch it you want clean hands so I'm going to go ahead and take these gloves off because I'm through with the resin part so I've got nice clean hands and I'm going to take my crystal knobs and then I'm going to um, just kind of go here and here just kind of standing over it to kind of make sure you're kind of across from each other and then you take your knobs and you push and twist wiggle it should have a really good bond on this surface of that resin it's already cured I can also come back and put a second layer on that will make it even more permanent inside your resin this will probably hold but I may do another coat on this one just because I added painted stuff in the middle just to give it more uh, dimension so normally I would not paint something in the middle but I just felt like that I had to hide that one little flaw these are so those right there are just so feminine and delicate looking it's just amazing how pretty they are and I absolutely love this TLP mica AXO Lotl A-X-O-L-O-T-L that is what is so shimmery and pretty so I'm going to cover this 